Hi, Stephen. I'm Lori. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So before we start our session today, I do just want to quickly go over kind of what my role is. Um, so basically, I am a domestic violence intern at Option House. You probably know my field instructor, Margie. Um, if for whatever reason you can't get a hold of me, she would be a good contact for you to reach out to. Um, she's also not available all the time, though, so I will give you the Option House hotline, and they're available 24 hours if you have any questions or concerns. You need to reach out to anyone. Um, also, before we start, I want to talk about confidentiality. So, basically, anything that's said in the session between you and I is confidential. However, I am a mandated reporter, so there are a few things I will have to report, such as if I think um, child abuse is occurring or elder abuse is occurring, I will have to break confidentiality to report that. Um, also, in the scenario where I feel like you're a danger to yourself or a danger to others, I'll also have to report that. Um, other than that, our sessions are confidential. Okay? Okay. Okay, so great. If I can just have you sign right here. Thank you. All right, so with that being said, go ahead and tell me a little bit about what brings you in today. Um, so I'm here today because uh, my uh, ex-girlfriend and I, we just recently broke up about oh, a month ago or so. And, um, you know, I've just been trying to kind of get away from her, and it's been, a, it's been a difficult process. Okay. And so that's why you came to Option House, or what was the scenario? Uh, well, you know, we were living together, and so it's just, like, I, I wanted to get away from her, and I felt like the only way to get away is to, like, move out, but I didn't really have a place to go, and so I came here. Did you feel unsafe being in Option House? Yes, I did. I felt really unsafe. Okay. And so what kind of situations were occurring? Um, there's a, but I mean, it's kind of, over the last couple of months, um, there's been different situations of violence, you could say, that have happened. Do you feel safe now where you're at? Uh, yeah, I feel safe now that I'm away. Um, I just, I mean, she doesn't know I'm here, and so, uh, I'm afraid that if she does find out, she might come for me, but other than that, uh, no, I feel pretty safe right now. Okay. Glad to know you're safe. So tell me a little bit about, you know, your work environment in that situation. Are you employed right now? Uh, yeah, I work at a church. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a janitor there. Um, do you like that? I do like that. It's fun. Uh, I've been there for five years now. Um, they're really supportive. They're, they're actually familiar with my, my living situation and everything there. And so, um, yeah, they're really supporting me through it and everything. Great. So you have some, like, friends in your environment that can help you when you need it. Yes. Yes, I do. I have a strong family and friend, like, support. And working at a church, I would think that maybe you're a spiritual person. Do you think that of yourself? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell me a little bit about that. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm a Christian. I believe there's God and everything. You know, everything kind of happens for a reason. And that really, at the end of the day, there's kind of like a, there's a much bigger, uh, I don't know, you could say, like, uh, yeah, reason for why everything's happening to kind of shape the future, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a good outlook. Mm -hmm. Did your girlfriend share um, faith with you? Oh, no, not at all. And did that kind of come up as a problem in your relationship? Uh, yeah, uh, it, yeah, definitely. Because, like, on Sundays and stuff, I go to church or whatever, and she just was, like, not about it. So okay. I would go, and she wouldn't. How did you feel personally about that aspect of the relationship? I mean, it was like difficult and it's hard because like being a person that like care about you can't really like share that kind of like part of your life with somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I found myself really like kind of just like veering away from the faith mm -hmm. almost because of it, you know, because I spend a lot of time with her. And so mm -hmm. it sounds to me like maybe your relationship with your girlfriend, the fact that you had different you know, viewpoints on religion maybe kind of brought you away from your sense of self and kind of what you identify with. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So other than your friends at work at church, um, what other kind of support system do you have? Uh, there's my grandma. Okay. I noticed you have a big smile on your face when you mentioned her. Yeah, my grandma is like my best friend of all time. Uh, she's like my biggest fan. Uh, I was raised by my grandma and so I spent the majority of my life with her, and so, um, yeah, she knows about the whole situation and everything that I'm in, and so uh, she's been really 
um, understanding and supportive and accepting of everything that's happening. Cool. So it seems like your grandma's someone that you can turn to when you need support and when you, she kind of knows everything about you. Mm -hmm. So as far as your living situation, I know you're at the shelter right now. Um, and a lot of people at the shelter are trying to get into transitional housing um, or, you know, some somewhere outside of the shelter. Do you think maybe your grandma would be a good place to turn to also? Yeah, definitely. I've talked to her about uh, moving in with her, and she is open and receptive to that. So nice. uh, definitely, uh, that's the plan. Okay, so that's great that you have your grandma's support and that she could be a potential housing option. Um, just know like you do have 45 days at the shelter and everyone kind of takes their own time to make sure that they're finding a safe environment to go to, you know, you're not in a rush for you to leave or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I do just kind of want to redirect and go back to talking about your relationship with your girlfriend. Um, so tell me a little bit more about that. Like how long were you guys together? Um, we were together for two years. Yeah, and so, um, you know, yeah, we met two years ago, or, and then shortly after we met, we got together, um, and it was great in the beginning, it was really fun, you know, we had a good time, it was, she was, like, always down to hang out and stuff, so, and we just hung out, we did everything together, you know, and then probably about a year ago, um, is when things kind of started to escalate, mm -hmm. in terms of, like, a lot more, like, violent acts, you could say, a lot more aggression, anger, um, you know, like hateful words and stuff, and so, put up with that for a year, uh, you know, about a year, um, and then probably towards the last, like, six months of that is when things started becoming really, like, unsafe, mm -hmm. and I really felt like I just needed to, like, find a place and get out yeah. of that relationship. So when you said violent acts and aggression started coming up in your relationship, are you talking strictly her towards you? Was there, you know, a combination? What was kind of going on there? Um, well, you know, uh, so definitely she was like, you know, she would push me or she would hit me or she would do stuff like that. I mean, I can't say I'm completely innocent, obviously, but I mean, I never like laid hands on her or anything like that. And like, obviously I get mad too and I'd say things that, I don't necessarily mean or, you know, I, mean, I just kind of had anger and stuff. So, yeah, I'm guilty of that. But, like, I didn't do anything, like, super severe, you know? Right. I mean, everyone has struggles in their relationship. Um, I think what is, what's important for you to know is that um, you're not to blame for any kind of violence that was taken out on you. You know, everyone has freedom of choice. So you're not to blame for that. And so I commend you for getting out of that situation to make yourself safe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bl uh, like blaming myself and really feeling like, you know, this is all like my fault and this is all because of me is like something that I really struggle with. Um, you know, I can't help but think, you know, like what if I had done something different or said, not said something that maybe she would have responded differently to. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I find myself a lot of times like, rethinking situations like that right and I realize in these situations it can be really easy to kind of place blame on yourself but I do just want you to know again you're not to blame and everyone does have freedom of choice and I kind of just want to know when you find yourself in these situations when you're angry or she's angry um, how do you cope with that um that's a good question uh, well, one thing that I tend to do is tend to listen to music. I like to listen to music a lot. Um, another thing I probably do is go to the gym, you know, work out, run on the treadmill, lift weights. Um, problem with that is, though, uh, she goes to the gym a lot, and we go to the same gym, so sometimes, like, when I want to go to the gym, like, she'll go to the gym, and so, mm -hmm. then I just find myself, like, Okay, I guess I'll uh, just like listen to music or play guitar or okay. stuff like that. Is there another gym in your area that you could potentially 
Switch to? Uh, I mean, it's, that's the closest one. That's the closest one to where we were living, but now I'm not going to be living there anymore. I don't have to worry about it. I cancel my membership because stuff's expensive. And, okay. yeah. so maybe we can find you another gym closer to where you'll be living. Yeah. Uh, my grandma my grandma, and where I was living is like, like super far away, so I kind of just kind of have to change like scenes. Does that feel like relief? Yeah, it feels refreshing. It's like kind of like starting a new chapter. I'm excited for it. Um, yeah. So when you mentioned you listen to music, what kind of music do you like to listen to that helps you kind of? Uh, you know, it's like calming music. Uh, a lot of like, I don't know, like orchestral or like jazz music. You know, so I like listen to like rain sounds to calm me down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that kind of help you? clear your head or does it help you think? Um, it really help, it helps calm me down. That's probably like the number one thing because like if I just get caught up in the moment, you know, about like whatever fight or argument that we're having, mm -hmm. I just like, I kind of listen to music to really just chill out and just kind of like forget that anger mm -hmm. and then kind of use that to go back into conversation with more of a clear mind. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you find that when you do go back into the conversation after using that coping skill, that things seem to de-escalate? Uh, on my part, yeah, but usually she's the one that doesn't de-escalate. So if I like, am willing to talk again like with her about a conversation and she's still not like receptive to that, then I kind of usually just like leave mm -hmm. and go somewhere else for the night and stay with a friend. Okay. That's good that you're getting yourself out of a bad situation and into a positive one. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that only started recently. Like I struggled with that in the beginning. I didn't I didn't really like I felt like I like me leaving would make things worse. Um because she would make it worse. She'd take it personally and stuff like that. She'd say a lot of things. She'd hold it over my head. And so I think near the end I kinda just stopped caring about what she said. So then I was just like, all right, I'm out of here. Now, so, do you still consider yourself in a relationship with her? Do you consider her an ex-girlfriend? I ex-girlfriend, definitely. Um, I left, I left, um, I, like, moved out, like, three weeks ago, and I would consider that would be the day that, like, we broke up and everything. And so, I haven't talked to her since. Mm -hmm. And how have you been feeling about not speaking to her and having contact with her? I mean, I feel a billion times better it feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulder but mm -hmm. I guess sometimes like I get my own head of like well what if she like finds out where I am or what if she comes and finds me you know or what if like she reaches out to my friends or family you know mm -hmm. stuff like that there's like worries like that yeah. um but for the most part like no it's pretty nice to be away and so are you, most of your support system, your grandma, your friends out from work, are they aware, all aware of the situation to where they won't be kind of giving you information about her that might cause you harm? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like no, they're definitely in the loop and they definitely know. Um, and so, yeah, no, they definitely know not to talk to her if they see her or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Well, because sometimes having information about her being reported back to you can stir up some feelings, either of anger or maybe, you know, missing her or things like that. And mm -hmm. so um, I think maybe it's important to consider, you know, those boundaries and just have conversations with them about it mm -hmm. um, in case those scenarios do come up. That way to prevent anything from happening. Yeah, having those conversations was difficult in the beginning. Um, I didn't really enjoy having them. I didn't really like doing it. But I knew it was necessary when we broke, we broke up, or we broke up, we broke up mm -hmm. to make it really, like, just so everybody was on the same page. Yeah. So, Stephen, something I would like to know is what's your perspective on the future between you and your girlfriend? Uh, well, I can tell you that we're definitely not getting back together. Um, I have no plans of that. Um, really... I just want to stay as far away from her as possible and so I can really kind of focus on myself and just grow.
And what does working on yourself look like? Uh, you know, I like to get a place on my own, you know, maybe get a better job, you know, like something full time. Okay, that sounds great. So I think maybe what we can do, uh, maybe some homework for you before our next session, um, would be to write down some strengths that you feel that you have, um, things you like about yourself. Um, that way we can kind of focus on those and go over those and reinforce them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. okay.